G'day and welcome to the Grow Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Truen. Each week, we speak with an owner who has grown a business with 5 to 30 team members to something bigger. Diving into their numbers and unearthing the pain they've experienced, we explore what they did to overcome each barrier and what they would do differently from day one. Let's get into it. Welcome everyone. Today we're turning the tables a little. Rob Cameron usually hosts most of these Quick Fire Friday casts and I've been a guest on here a few times. So we thought we put Rob in the hot seat, especially due to his experience with today's topic of recruitment for small business. Thanks for your time today, Rob. Oh, my pleasure, Troy. Feel a bit weird being on the other side of the microphone? Not really, because it's the same side of the microphone, but definitely... You're just going to do a shitload more talking. <laughs> That's right. Different side of the questions. So yeah, all good fun. We'll explain for the audience... So you and I work together at Grow a Small Business and our Friday cast less than 20 minutes on one topic with an expert and we leave the audience with at least one thing they can take away and start acting on to, to get better at this area. Yep. And today we're talking about a recent 10-day short course we launched called the Ultimate Recruitment Toolkit. So we're going to dive a bit deeper into that after we talk about the pain and some of the mistakes people or small business owners in particular make around recruiting and hiring team members. The Ultimate Recruitment Toolkit short course comes with a playbook you can copy and paste and drop into your business and tailor and start using. So it'll support you in becoming a more effective hiring manager. Maybe let's start, Rob, with why did we decide there was a need for a recruitment course and the playbook and all the, the things that come with it for small businesses? Yeah, look, there's a couple of reasons that we thought this course made a lot of sense. I guess it really stems from our own experience growing our own small businesses and managing people. Troy, I know you often talk about the hardest thing in business is the people, but it's also where most of the value is. And certainly throughout the rest of our courses, we talk about people being the number one asset in a business and the impact that having an A player in your business can make on the growth and success of the business. Yes. The chasm between an A and a B player is just huge. You it's like day and night when you're working alongside a B player and then and they're replaced with an A player. It's, it's just an amazing difference and yeah. a lot more fun. Yeah, absolutely. It feels a, so much better to get an A player in place that if you get the right people, they're probably a lot better than you at getting the job done. And it feels so refreshing to turn up each day surrounded by A players that are, are kicking goals everywhere as opposed to B players that you're constantly trying to fix up their mess. And I guess related to that, the cost of getting it wrong, and we talk about a lot of facts and figures and statistics around the cost of, of getting it wrong, but I think most people intuitively know, both from a financial but also an emotional perspective, if you hire the wrong people and you have to fix it up, it is no fun at all. That's the hardest thing I've done in all my 15 businesses now is letting people go or firing people. But it's always my fault because I've either hired the wrong person or I haven't managed and supported them to, to grow into the role of being that A player. But it's so, so hard, as you well know as well. Yeah, absolutely. The source of most of the pain and frustration in business is people when you've made a, a bad hire. And I guess working with a lot of clients, helping them grow their business I guess recruiting A players, hanging on to A players, dealing with B players and C players, it's a constant point of discussion. And what we recognized was that we couldn't find anything in the market that helped people, particularly business owners, get better at recruiting. There was no sort of go-to place that we could find that helped people in this critical area. It's just so important to get it right. And like with the other material we've got with the business transformation program and the three courses in that, yourself, Mick and I find that we're just repeating ourselves the same messages to business owners. So we felt it's just easier to put some of that, a lot of that learnings and teachings into something like a short course like this one is, and can help a lot more business owners and managers a lot faster. Yeah, no, that's well put. So what are some of the common mistakes you see when it comes to recruitment and maybe particularly in small business, because that's the area that we really focus in on. Well, I guess the first thing I'd say is that perhaps related to the point we just touched on, we don't see people investing time in learning how to be a better recruiter. So if you've had a couple of misfires 
and you're not quite getting the right people, what are you doing to become better in this area? So I think that's the starting point. And I guess very closely related to that is being clear on what your process is for hiring. Too many people, when it comes to hiring, suddenly go shoot from the hip and go, oh, well, I'll, I'll stick an ad up on Seek or whatever it is, or I'll ask some friends if they know anyone. And they don't really have a clear process for how we're going to attract great candidates, how we're going to assess which the best ones are, and how do we then negotiate and get them over the line. Again, related to that, Sometimes you may have a process in place, but you're gathering information during that process that's either useless information, it's not helpful to the candidate or to you to assess whether they're the right fit, or it might be inefficient. So it only gives you some of the story and doesn't really give you the insights you need as to whether this person is an A player that's going to be successful. Certainly making sure you know how to ask the right questions at interview stage is a really important step. And we very much advocates of the behavioral questioning approach when it comes to interviews. Perhaps one of the issues that creates some of these mistakes is what, Troy, I know you use the term warm body syndrome. So it's basically saying we just need anybody in the seat and we're in a rush and we're just going to find the first person who turns up with a warm body and assumedly some sort of pulse, <laughs> they're in the seat. Yeah. And I guess related to that, the other common mistake is you might have a couple of people to choose from and you just compare them against each other and choose who you think might be the best person. You're not actually considering are any of these people suitable for the role that I've got? So again, if you just need a warm body, you're going to choose who you think's the best, as opposed to really assessing each candidate against the job and working out, first of all, are any of these people up to the standard required? At the end of the day, if you're comparing a bunch of B players, you're still only going to hire a B player. So you really need to compare the candidate to a well-defined role, attributes and behaviours and making sure that you get someone in the job who can perform to the A-player standard. Yep. No, great points. What are some of the keys to getting better at recruitment, Rob? Well, I guess this is exactly what we focus on in the course. And the, the starting point is being really clear on what it is you want. So we advocate having really clear job descriptions and often we don't see them in place, or if they are in place, they might not be up to date or relevant to what the role actually is. So really understanding what that job description is, and then looking at, well, what are those hiring attributes that we're actually looking to hire against? So what do we need in these candidates? Is it a case we need someone who's got excellent attention to detail? Is it a work ethic thing? You know, do they have to be able to deal well with clients? What are some of those key attributes that we're going to assess against? So that's really the starting point, and we emphasize that a lot in the course. I guess the other important fact is that you need to treat the attraction of great candidates like a sales and marketing exercise. And that's because it is a sales and marketing exercise. At the end of the day, the more people you can bring in at the top of the recruitment funnel, the more that you're going to have to choose from and the better the odds that you're going to be able to find that A player that's really going to make a difference. You know, we encourage people to start as early as possible and the very best in this game always have a talent list ready to go. They're recruiting even when they don't have open roles in their business so that when a role does appear, they've already got someone shortlisted to bring in and, and start opening up the discussions. Be the change you want to see in your business. Become more productive and less stressed with our free Transform Your Performance online course. Once you see the benefits, put your entire team through the course at no cost. We start out by telling you the secret to guaranteed success. Then over 100 lessons help you be more focused, present, productive, and feel more in control about work. Growasmallbusiness.com. Yeah, I remember we had a guest on a year and a half ago now, a very fast-growing business. I can't remember. It's in the tech space in the U.S., 
that I think they were at around 100 team members by then. They're only about three years old, but I was really impressed mm. with the CEO. And he said he has in his calendar a couple of hours a week, later in the week, where he will just invest time on LinkedIn and stalk A players. So he yep. will identify people that look they may look like a perfect fit for them. And then he starts a conversation with them. Eventually, if they're still in the, in the running, they'll go out. He'll ask them to go for coffee or lunch and get to know them over months, if not years. So yeah. it builds that bench that he's got A players ready to go when a role is needed. Yeah, and you can imagine the difference that would make when it comes to recruiting as opposed to being in a reactive space where you, you're just desperately trying to find a needle in a haystack, a particular role that you might have that suddenly becomes vacant. And I guess, you know, when it comes to becoming better at recruitment, really what we're trying to do in this course is help people design a process that's going to give them relevant information on the A players that they want to choose from. So we go right through what's the application information that you're asking for and that you're going to be assessing. Is it a cover letter and CV? And if so, what do you need to see in there that's going to give you the information to make the best decision you can. We talk a lot about behavioural interviewing, lots of real life examples there around good interview questions and I guess how to assess the answers that you're listening to. We talk about the potential to use tests, which can be relevant for some role. And, you know, really importantly, you don't want to skimp on the reference checks. Who are you reference checking with? So it's no good doing a reference check on their best friend. You really want to be talking to ideally a manager or someone in a position of authority who really had to work closely with this person. And what's the information you're expecting when you conduct a reference check? So some really important points that we go into in the course. Um, I've got a bit of a story on that one, Rob. Sorry. I love a story. Uh, well, one of the team it. members I hired, I'm not going to say which business, found out some years later that one of the reference that she gave was her ex-boyfriend. So I didn't do my job well enough to to make sure that I knew who I was actually speaking with. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't imagine how that one went. So <laughs> fantastic. Well, thankfully she was an A player, so that worked out well, but it could have bitten me in the ass, that's for sure. Absolutely. And I guess we sort of, towards the back end of the course, we also talk about what happens when you get to that point where you've got your preferred candidate, you've found an A player, how do you negotiate with them to actually get them over the line? If they're genuinely an A player, there's probably high probability they're already in a job. So what is it that you can do to try and swing them over the line? And what do you do if they say, look, I've just been counter-offered from my current employer an extra $10,000? Or what if they just reject you and say, look, I've gone through the process, but this isn't the job for me? So all of that gets covered in the course and there's some of the key steps along the way to becoming a better recruiter. What about shortcutting it and using a recruiter, for example? Would you recommend small business owners and hiring managers use recruiters? Yeah, there are definitely pros and cons to using professional recruiters and headhunters. I guess the pros are that they are experts in what they do or they should be. They should be very, very good at running a recruitment process. And I guess where I see the most value come is if you're working with specialist recruiters that have a deep talent pool of great candidates ready to go. So, you know, chances are that they're well networked and they know who the A players in the industry and the role that you're looking for and can bring you some great candidates that you would struggle to access otherwise. So that's, to my mind, one of the key areas of value in using a professional recruiter, not to mention the fact that can buy you back an awful lot of time. If you do recruitment well, it is time consuming. So if you can save some time by outsourcing part of the process to a professional recruiter, that can be a great outcome as well. I guess what you have to remember though, on the flip side, this does come at a cost. So I would say that the cost typically ranges between 15 and 25% of the annual wage of the person that you're looking to hire. So if you're looking to hire someone who's going to get paid $100,000 a year, you're looking at somewhere between a $15,000 and a $25,000 bill 
to engage a professional recruiter to help you find someone like that. So that is not insignificant cost, but there is value that comes with that if you're using the right recruiter. It's certainly better if you work with a recruiter that knows your business intimately, but at the end of the day, the call is always going to be yours at the end of the day, and you're going to have to be confident you have the right person because you're going to live with the consequences. So you still need to have the skills around interviewing and reference checks because you're going to have to make sure that that last bit of the process is done and you're completely confident with the person you're bringing into the business. And what will people get from using our ultimate recruitment toolkit and playbook? So I guess there's a few key things that come with the course. So what we're really trying to give people is a solid, well-researched, tested and thought out recruitment process that they can adapt to their business and follow that will give them a much better chance of getting a good result when it comes to recruiting people. There's heaps of tips and advice from our experience and what we've been able to distill from the many resources we've tapped into over the decades for this corner of the business. And there's a whole heap of, you know, things like phone scripts, email templates, behavioral questions, including what to look for, what's a weak answer, what's a strong answer, and other templates and examples that, you know, for example, crafting a great job ad, creating behavioral questions and the structure of a full day. The best resources from other advisors we've come across. So the five be best books we recommend to read on hiring or recruitment, the best podcasts on recruitment and other tools and resources we recommend along the way. Yeah, thanks, Rob. And just going back to the costs, you know, part of some of those books you just mentioned there, I've read books and surveys can cost anywhere between one and 27 times the role's annual salary if you get a mishire. Now, 27 yeah. is obviously quite high. That would be someone like a very senior, or like a CEO of a very large company, but mm. even one times, one to two times that annual, because all the hidden costs that are in there as well, it's just phenomenal. Small yeah. business owners and hiring managers in those businesses really have to get this right. Yeah. Absolutely. What is at least one thing you'd recommend a small business owner does based on your knowledge and expertise in, around recruitment after listening to this cast? Yeah, I love this question. And of course, I'm not going to answer it precisely because I'm going to give you a couple of things I recommend. And the first one is obviously have a look at our ultimate recruitment toolkit. So go to our website, growasmallbusiness.com, and you'll see it there on the homepage. So that's my first bit of advice. But I'd also add hiring and recruitment resources like books and podcasts to your professional development. So you start to become better at recruiting. At the end of the day, you're a manager, you're managing people. And a key part of that is the hiring component and being able to bring A players in. I guess the other thing we can do is recommend that people listen to some of the podcasts we've done with recruiters. So I know you did a good one with the guy from Recruiter Mill. Is it you? you just been hungry? Yep. Looks like a fantastic business, that one. That's a uh, software-led recruitment service, yeah. Yeah, and there was Declan and Blake from Ex Recruiter in Brisbane, and I think there might be a few others in there as well. So we'll put those links in part of the show notes. Great. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time today, Rob. I think the audience got a lot of value out of that. Good on you, Troy. Awesome, mate. Well done. And for our audience, we would greatly appreciate a review in iTunes or whatever platform you listen to us on. More reviews means we bubble up higher in iTunes, etc. So more business owners looking for podcasts to help with their growth will find us.